in your Bible, whether it's electronically or in the paper version. We're going to Matthew chapter 5 this morning, and we're going to continue to look at the Sermon on the Mount because it is Jesus' words, and his words are powerful, they are life-giving, and you know what? Sometimes they're challenging, and that's okay. And I, I've been encouraging us this whole time that when we receive a challenging word from God, instead of like hiding ourselves in condemnation, we would say, Yes, Lord. Amen. Can you practice that? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There we go. Right? When we hear that word from God, we just, Yes, I, I receive it. And God only speaks to us, man, this morning. I had a good time of prayer, right? God only speaks to us. And things are only brought into the light because God wants to heal us. He wants to restore us. He wants to make us whole. And so when he speaks to us, we got to remember to ourselves, it's not in condemnation. It's a, yes, Lord, I, I want that. I want to receive that. Yes, it's good to hear God's voice. Amen. You guys don't know, oh, there's so much going on. Okay, next week I'll share more. More. God is doing a whole bunch of stuff at the church. <laughs> I was just talking with the pastor on, on Friday. We got to have lunch. And I said, Pastor, there's just so much to celebrate. How do I celebrate all that God is doing? I'm like one that I like to say it all. And you're going to have to wait for a moment, okay? And so uh, we, there's good things happening. Good things. God is restoring people. God is restoring the church. Man, 2020. Mm. You guys ready? It's, all, it's November. I know. It's the first week in November. Pastor, you're talking about next year already. All right, Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we were previously talking uh, about the relationships, talking a whole bunch about relationships. Uh, we, we finished our, our message last week on Ephesians chapter 5. We talked about what is the, what is this, what is the hitch pen that holds a marriage together. It's the, it's the love of Christ. And he, Jesus, he came to you, he came to me, and he thought about our greatest good at his greatest expense. And if we're going to have marriages, or we're going to have relationships, that, that, that are healthy, that look like Christ, that bless other people, that bless each other. We've got to be able to love like Christ did. And husbands, as said last week, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Give it all up for them. This is the kind of love that we can have. When we have our eyes fixed on Jesus, walk in obedience to Him, we can start thinking about the other greatest good at my greatest expense. We also saw that marriage is an important thing, that it is one man and one woman committed to each other in covenant marriage. So death was part. Why? Because that reflects who Jesus is and his commitment to you and me. Forever committed to us. Faithful to us. He's not going anywhere else. He has decided that you, we are the ones, we are his bride, he is committed to us, his love endures forever, it is always for us, from this day, for forever, it's never going to change, and I hope that we, in response to his love, also love him back. In the passage today, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 through 37. And through the whole Sermon of the Mount, Jesus is really upping the ante. He's, he's bringing what was normally thought as good, as following after Jesus, and he's taking it up a notch. And he said, he made this statement that uh, really um, encourages me sometimes. If, I, if I'm if i honest, it brings a little bit of condemnation to me. I, I sometimes feel bad about it. But, you know, I need to remember, just as I've been encouraging you, that the voice of God is a good thing. His conviction, it's a good thing. But he says that unless our holiness, right, exceeds that of the Pharisees, we'll never see the kingdom of God. And every 
verse and every section as we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount is taking what the Pharisees thought was a good thing, what they, they thought was a was them fulfilling the law, and he said, no, it's not that. It's actually something. It's something greater than that. And so this morning, it, it continues that uh, encouragement to us this morning that our holiness has to exceed that of the Pharisees, and specifically, he's talking about swearing this morning uh, and. and, and oath giving this morning and about our words that actually have weight. So let's read together Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 33. We're going to read through 37 this morning. It says this, Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Verse 37. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your words this morning. They challenge me. And God, I pray that as we are challenged by your spirit, that your conviction will come. And Lord, that we will be molded more and more into your image. I thank you, Father, that each one of us in this room have the ability to reflect your goodness and your glory. And God, as we wrestle with your words this morning, I thank you that you want to enable us to look more like you. So Father, I pray that your words would accomplish their purpose as you say that they will in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the time as this is written, in Jesus' day, it was normal for the teachers of the day, it was normal thing for a Jewish person to swear by a sacred object, whether it be a holy, the holy temple, God himself. Uh, but today, I, I remember even as a kid, maybe you had have, you have said this, um, but that you had sworn to say that you're telling the truth, and you maybe have said this before, I, I crossed my heart, and I hope to die, or are you something like that? I, I swear on my, my mama's grave, I swear on my daddy's grave. And this is this oftentimes it's a using this taking an oath like this or this swearing, it's a, it's usually it's using a sacred object, something that has holds strong value to you or to others, and, and, and it gives validity uh, to the words that you speak. And Jesus took here what was ordinarily permitted and spoke again, as Jesus does so expertly, to the heart. Verse 33, right? You, have, you, you, have, you know that it was said that you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. It, it, it was okay, and it was even permitted by God to use these things. But verse 34 through 36, it, it, it encourages, don't take those oaths. Why? Oh, don't take these oaths because you are not God. You have, you have no control over these things happening. James 5.12 is really interesting. It, it, it repeats these things. It says, James 5, verse 12, it says, Above all, brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath. Let your yes be yes and your no's be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. I think you are familiar that your words has power to speak life or death. In many times in our context, you know, our words are, are spoken of. I don't know, who, who in here likes to talk a lot? No, don't raise your hand. Right? And in a 
a relationship or in a society or in an area right, where we like to talk and sometimes our words don't hold much value. And, and we're just used to just saying everything on our mind. And the first thing that comes to my mind, I say it. I just speak it. I don't even think about it. I do it. Right? I, and, and Jesus, if part of what he's doing here in speaking against oaths and speaking to vows is saying, hey, your words have value. There, 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 there is power in the things that we say. And, and it has the power to what? Speak life, right? We have power in our words to speak life and to build each other up. How many love being around people that are just encouraging? I'll just point this out. I love Kirk because Kirk is an encourager, yeah. right? I love that everybody agrees, right? Right? You have the power with your words to build people up, to encourage people, and to uplift them, and to speak value to them. And we also have power in our words. Our words are not just syllables that have gone through wind, through our vocal cords, and formed words, and they're just, they, they have substance to them. And the encouragement, or the, the warning here that is repeated in James is that your words have power that your yes just be yes and your no's just be no, so that you don't fall under condemnation of the things that you say. Oh, I used to say that all the time, right? cross my heart, hope to die. Right? And I'm like, why would I ever say these things? I don't hope to die. Like, like, I know myself, right? I tell myself all the time. Like, sometimes I make mistakes. It's not Monday, it's Friday, November 8th, right? I, I make a lot of mistakes. And all of a sudden, I make these vows with my words. And Jesus said, your words have weight. And then I break these vows, and I believe this wholeheartedly. Some of us may be living under curses because the words that we say, the promises that we've made, the oaths that we've made, and we've broken those oaths. Our words are powerful. Don't curse yourself by taking vows and oaths you have no control over. I also believe this morning that not only do our words have power, and if you don't understand this, uh, what I'm saying about vows and how they can bring curses on us when we break them in oaths that we don't fulfill, they actually do have meaning, they do hold power of us. And uh, I'm going to be teaching on that again, most likely. I was debating to do it next week or not, but I believe I'm going to be doing it next week, talking about the vows and how uh, we can o overcome them and how our words actually hold power over us. But I want to encourage you this morning, as I'm speaking here, saying, yeah, I, I've broken a lot of my own oaths or a lot of my own vows that I've said. Uh, I believe wholeheartedly in the name of Jesus, that it's the name above every other name, just as we have saying this morning, and that it has the power to break off curses, and it has the power to break off vows, and if you find yourself this morning re uh, remembering, or the Holy Spirit is bringing remembrance to you, the things that you have said and you haven't kept, all you have to do, there isn't some, there's no formula to it, there's no, all you have to do is call in the name of Jesus, and you can be set free from every curse. Jesus became the curse for us. But what Jesus, the part of what Jesus is warning us, and the part of this teaching in Matthew chapter 5 about taking oath, is that our words have power. And some of us, all of a sudden, because we've made these oaths and we haven't kept them, we're living under the brokenness of our own word. And so I encourage you, if that's you this morning, you say, Jesus, set me free from my own words. And Jesus will do just that. If anything, in verse 37, 37, the last verse here, anything more than this comes from evil. Anything more than just your word, it, it comes from evil. Jesus brings us to this point. Let what you say simply be yes or no. Because oaths, my words. Oaths are just a poor substitute for integrity. 
Some of us take those those take those vows with you've been in those situations, right? You know someone doesn't believe you, so you're trying to convince them by adding more vows on top of it or more oaths. I promise you, I really promise you, you know, by my, my mother's grace, my father's grace, or, or when I was a kid, I used to say, right? I hope to die, right? We we're trying to add value to the words that we're saying. And Jesus is getting at, hey, your oaths, your added value, your swearing by these sacred things, they they actually are a poor substitute for your ability to tell the truth. Yeah. Oh, man. Sometimes I preach to myself on Sundays. I hope you guys know that. <laughs> in America, in the U.S., the Bible was once a sacred object, right? And so in the U.S., uh, the U.S. courts, they would they would swear, or they would put their hands on, on top of the Bible and, and say, hey, I swear to tell the truth by this, because they knew that, hey, it, if I didn't speak the truth and I was swearing on, on, on this, then I, they knew that they, they were bringing a curse on themselves. It, 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 was a, it was a sacred, it was a holy object. It is no longer that way, and sometimes it's just an object to people. But words of oath are used when your words have no meaning. It hurt me when I wrote that this, this week. Words of oath, the words of our vows that we make, the things, uh, they're only used when our words have no meaning. I have a fun opportunity of being a parent now. Denver's in a row this morning. I can tell on tell you. Each of us, but right, have you ever been in those situations, right? You, I promise, I promise, I promise that I'm telling the truth, right? The, our words, she is encouraging us, our words should only be a simple yes or a no. When we fail to be known as a true speaker, we will often make up for it by making oaths and vows. You said this morning, okay, Pastor, I'm going to change my habits. I'm no longer going to take the vows. I'm no longer going to eliminate it from my vocabulary. And if you were to say that this morning, and that that idea came to your mind, like, okay, I'll just, I'll just fulfill this by not doing it anymore. That's, that's great. You're missing exactly what Jesus was getting at in this passage. Because if you were to do that, and if I were to do that, okay, I'll just... I'll just speak better, and I just will eliminate saying those oaths, saying those words, because those words are bringing curses to me. Uh, you're missing exactly what Jesus is saying. It's not about avoiding oaths. It's not just that oaths are inadequate. The issue here Jesus is speaking to is that each one of us when we have walked in faith with God, when we have decided to follow Him, we should be lovers of the truth. We should be truth tellers. We should be speakers of truth. Because we represent the truth. Last weekend I said that as a married couple, if we are following after Jesus, if we have decided to follow him, and as a married couple, we should have the best marriages ever. And if you aren't experiencing the best marriages ever, then hey, I have to come and we can talk about this and we can declare some freedom and we can walk in this. But hey, because we have the best example of love, we can love the best. We're the best lovers because we're Christians. We should also be the most accurate speakers ever because we represent the truth, Jesus himself. Do you guys know where you are, the image of God? We were created in His image as a representation of Him. And so everything that we do in this earth is a representation of who God is, or it should be, or it has the opportunity to be a representation of who God is. 
So when they come in contact with you when you're at your workplace, when they come in contact with you in your neighborhood, when they come in contact with you at school, when your family interacts with you, they should, they have the opportunity to interact with God and His character because we bear His image. The goal should be that as men and women who follow after Christ, men and women who have declared that He is the way, we should, uh, we should be able to reflect the character of God in every area of our lives. Jesus is true. And everything that He speaks comes to pass. If you ever doubted that this morning, I want to remind you of that. Everything Jesus has ever spoken is truth, and everything he speaks will come to pass. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish its purpose, and shall succeed in the thing that I sent it forth to accomplish. Oh, this is good. Jesus' words will always accomplish its purpose. It will always be true. You can always take it to the bank. Every word in this scripture, every single iota, every single word, it will come to pass. It is true. How does that encourage us this morning? In John chapter 8, verse 36, this morning, Jesus said, we are free. Some of us can't believe that. Some of us have a hard time receiving that word. God, I am truly free. My past is no longer who I am. It is gone. God has redeemed me. What he says is true. Some of us have a hard time believing that we are a child of God. What he says is true. If we have received him by faith, you are a child of God. You are his son. You are his daughter. Last week we talked about that the fact that Jesus, when we come to him, he makes us a co-heir with him. We're not a second rate any longer. We're not, we're not dirty rags any longer. No, we are now the righteousness of Christ. I'll just read to me and then I'm just right here. Amen! Yes! Believe it! It's true! He spoke it, right? This is the opportunity that we have, that we would walk in His likeness. We are His image. We bear His image. And because He is a true speaker, everything He says is true. Everything He says comes to pass. We, he, we have hope in Him. He's going to return. He saved us. He set us free. He heals us. He's redeemed us. And so now, we who follow Him must also... Be lovers of truth. Jesus says it simply here. Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Why? Because when you do, it reflects me. It shows who I am. To all those who are around me. Taking oath are a terrible substitute for telling truth. You shouldn't have to swear by something greater than yourself for your words to hold value or to hold weight. Be a people of your word, Jesus encouraged us this morning. Be a people of your word. We should be the most reliable people. I want to meet you next week at 7 o'clock. I fail at these things. I know. I'm confessing this this morning. I need to work on this. I'm going to do this for you. It should matter. It should hold weight. We don't have to add promises. We don't have to add oaths. We don't have to add vows to it. No, when we say it, it should be accomplished. Just as Christ, Isaiah 55, 1, when he speaks, it always, always, always accomplishes his purpose.
Be a people of your word. So that James 5.12 does not become true of us. The end of James chapter 5, verse 12 says that you should, your yes should be yes, and your no should be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Jesus says it this way, anything more than that comes from evil. This morning, we have an opportunity again to commit ourselves to being true speakers. I pray this this morning with, with somebody. God desires that we would go from glory to glory. We are made in His image. We are His representation. And so now our walk with Him is, Lord, would you break off every chain, tear off everything that is not of you, so that I can reflect who you are to all those who are around me. And this is the opportunity that we have this morning to recommit ourselves to say, yes, God, I will be a lover of truth. I will represent you well. Yes, I will be a person of my word. People will be able to count on me, and I don't have to add anything to it. This is what Jesus spoke to when the Pharisees were were, were used to, and it was ordinary for them to call on something else, to add to their words. He said, no, it's not just about breaking, it's not just about avoiding oath. No, it's about being a lover of truth. Simply do what you say you're going to do. I don't know about you this morning, but this week, multiple times, I called out to God and said, Lord, I need your help in this. And that's the opportunity that we have in this moment to say, God, I need your help in this. Father, I want to reflect who you are well. I want to be a lover of truth. I want my word to have value. I want to what I say to represent you well. And so the first thing this morning in response, I don't know everybody in the room. I don't know who is, uh, who is following Jesus and who is not following this Jesus. Jesus this morning, but I want to give everybody an opportunity. If you have never made a decision to follow Jesus, to say, yes, Jesus, I want you to be the decision maker in my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want to follow you with every ounce of my being. If that's you this morning, you say, you know what, Pastor? I'm not living for Jesus. And this morning, I'm making a decision to live for Jesus. I want you to raise your hand right now and say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you with all of who I am. That's you, man. I, I, I want to follow you with everything that I am. Amen. We're going to pray together, and as we have a time of prayer, I want to encourage you to, to come up and to respond. Say, yes, you, I want to follow after you completely. But secondly, I think we need to commit ourselves to truthfully following through with our words. So why don't we all stand this morning? And, and that is the response that we have to the word. Whenever Jesus challenges us in who we are and what our norm is, the opportunity is to respond and say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. Yes, Lord, I receive your conviction. Conviction, Help me, strengthen me, allow me to be more like you. And that's the prayer that we can pray this morning. So will you bow your heads with me? And as we pray, I want you to respond. I'll be up here to pray with you, but I pray that you would get out of your seat this morning and say, yes, God, help me to be one that speaks the truth. Where my words hold value in themselves, I don't have to take an oath of anything else. I don't have to use any other power. I don't have to swear by something higher than myself. My words will have value. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your challenge this morning to us. To be people who are truth speakers. To be people of our word. Because it reflects who you are. So Father, I pray now that as we respond, Lord, that we would come to you and find grace. To be a people of our word. That our simple yes would mean yes, and our simple no would mean no. Father, give us courage to repent 
where repentance is needed. Jesus, may your name be high and exalted today. And may you break off every chain and every curse that may exist from our broken vows. And may we find grace and strength to live like you. In Jesus' name. If that's you this morning, you're like, yes, Andrew, I, I didn't respond. I need to find grace. I need to ask for help that, that my words will hold value, that I would be a person of my word. If that's you this morning, I'm going to invite you to pray. We're going to take five minutes to respond to the Lord. Let's pray together at the altar. Pray together at your seats and say, God, give me strength to be a person of my word.